Assalamu alaikum everybody. Hope you are fine. So today we are going to discuss about the chapter 5 of the book of William Stallings. The topic is antenna and propagation. So first if I ask you that what is an antenna? So antenna is a conductor actually which conducts transmission and reception like I am talking so I have antenna in my body so I am transmitting so my transmitting part is my mouth I am actually generating voice from there and you can hear that so your ear is receiver and vice versa whenever you are talking I am listening so my ear is receiver and your mouth is a transmitter but if we talk about technical things that antenna like uh, whenever like I'm talking you are not in front of me so you are in a distant place so I'm using a via we are communicating so for that we are using a device which actually transmitting my signal and you are receiving that and you are actually doing the same thing in opposite part so then we can talk about the antenna part in technical way that antenna is an electrical conductor and that conductor actually does two things transmission and reception and nowadays we have only one antenna which is capable of transmitting and receiving both and we can call it transceiver and here I have actually uh, showed you how our propagation actually takes place and this is very important that we don't actually send any electrical signal in our communication wireless communication we actually send electromagnetic signal if it is not magnetic signal then it will not come to a receiver so that's why we actually propagate electromagnetic signals And for the antenna, some important parts. Number one is radiation pattern. Radiation pattern actually it gives you a two-dimensional cross section that how the uh, antenna radiation looks like. Like if it is omnidirectional antenna, it looks like from the top view you can see that this antenna actually radiating its power in all direction. Like if if I'm talking, so my voice is going everywhere. So in, in uh, from the top view we can see it's like that and for the directional antenna it can be like that some antenna is there so the pattern is like that so they are directional they are not omnidirectional so these are the thing we can talk about and the next one is that beam width beam width actually it actually measures the directivity of the antenna and both case in omnidirectional and directional both case it can be uh, managed but for directional it is very important like which direction our signal will radiate so the direction is very important like you can see that this is the direction so signal is going in that direction not there and it's in of omnidirectional so the signal is going 360 degree so what will could be the measure like the beam width so in omnidirectional in a common sense it's a 360 degree but in our uh, later part like whenever we'll talk about cellular network the mobile communication we will see some omnidirection antenna but it is actually uh, radiating signal in a bit directional way so that direction is called the radiation uh, beam width and for the directional antenna this direction is very precise like for parabolic dish antenna or uh, yagi od antenna or horn mouth antenna there are a lot of antennas directional antennas so how we will calculate the direction so it is angled by a, it is measured by an angle so this angle is said 
that in the middle part it accumulates the maximum power so if i draw a plane like so if we if i radiate in that direction gradually so the power is actually going to be a bit low and the same thing happens here also so say for example i am actually transmitting in 10 watt so whenever i'm going in that direction so it will be 10 9.8 something like that so how long or how much i will actually transmit that angle so if it becomes 50 percent that means if it becomes 5 watt then we will stop radiating so that 50 percent sometimes it uh, the measurement is 22.5 degree or 23 degree in each direction that accumulates 45 or 46 degree not the same for all cases sometimes it can be 60 degree it can be 75 degree depends so this is called beam width the reception pattern is that in which pattern you are actually sending the signal like in my discussion class i have already told you that if you throw a ball so that cricket ball is not bigger than your palm still you uh, make your two hand together and you catch the ball so that the ball can fill into your palm very smoothly or it if it, it, it fills a bit exaggerate way or a bit side way still you can hold it say for example the basketball or a football so if you want to catch your football or basketball the same way you do for a cricket ball it will not work actually because that has a bigger surface it needs a bigger surface so we make our hand a bit wider make a hell hollow between two hands and we try to catch the ball so reception pattern the equivalent to the radiation pattern so that should be equal at least if it is less for directional antenna we might lose we might lose some signals so before we go to type of antenna there is another antenna we call it isotropic antenna this antenna is a reference antenna and it uh, actually radiates power in all direction which is actually not possible for us to build an antenna like that so it's isotropic antenna is a reference antenna see if we talk about antenna types antenna are two types directional antenna and omnidirectional antenna and you can see the pictures omnidirectional antenna the uh, the main types of antenna is called dipole antenna it has some stick sometimes it does not because uh, you the cell phone use dipole antenna but the, you cannot see the uh, antenna it is embedded chip so uh, once we had our cell phone it has antenna so these are antenna are called hertz antenna it are two types half dipole antenna and quarter dipole antenna so this half dipole antenna means half wave antenna that means your lambda will be polarized by half and here quarter dipole that means lambda by four so we can see the device we are using it is a wireless LAN so this type of LAN we use this quarter dipole antenna something like that so you can see this type of device in many places and for directional antenna you know this antenna very well this is parabolic dish antenna and this is horn mouth antenna this is also a directional antenna and this is another type of antenna yagi yoda antenna it's look it looks like like your tv antenna before but it is not actually it is also directional antenna so the, this directional antenna actually direct way specific direction and there should be another antenna who will actually receive the signal say same for these antennas but these are omnidirectional antenna it radiates in a bigger surface or bigger area it can be 360 degree it can be 120 degree it can be 180 degree depends upon your pole So for the radiation pattern, these are the different types of radiation pattern from the top view, side view, we can see like that. And if we cross section a parabolic dish antenna, it looks like that. So the surface is called direct text. It is a parabolic surface and 
the midpoint is called focus. So what happens actually whenever you transmit the signal, so all the signal is comes to the focus and it actually makes a direction. How much? I have said that half of my power and it reflects here and it goes like that. And for the reception, signal will come in from different different places. It will fill in the uh, fill in the surface, and then it will be reflected, and every signal will go to the focus. And there is a cable. This cable is called feeder cable. It's a thick cable, a hollow cable inside a conductor. So this cable actually receives the signal. So if we want to know about the antenna, we need to know the antenna gain. It's very important. So the gain of your antenna. So we have simplified the formula. So you can remember this one or you can remember this one depending upon that which are the parameters available. Like AE divided by lambda squared by 4 pi. So if the lambda of the signal is given, so you can use that or the lambda is not given if the frequency is given then you can use that formula or you can you can convert it you can do it in time anyway so the simplified formula is 4 pi f square into ae divided by c square c is the speed of light f is the fundamental frequency and pi you know 3.14 it's a constant ae this is the important part this is the area of the antenna so area of the surface but this area is not the whole surface this is called ae means the effective area so how we can uh, talk about the effective area like uh, if we talk about a parabolic dish antenna so parabolic dish antenna looks like a circle so if we have a radius of 3 meter so what is the area of the antenna pi r square so pi r square means 3.14 into so as r is 3 so 9 so which is equal to almost 28 or something like that 28 point something right so this is the total area 28 like meter square so this is the total area of the antenna but this is not your area in the formula. The formula is AE. <clears throat> that means the effective area. So how do you know what is the effective area? So there is a chart. There is a chart. From that, you can get the effective area. Like I'm talking about parabolic antenna. So if it is a parabolic antenna, the effective area is 56% of the total area or 0.56 of total area. So if we multiply with 0.56, then you will get the effective area. So what could be? Let me use my calculator 28 into 0.56, which is equal to 15.68. 15.68 meter square so you know that the total area is 28 but the effective area that means the most of the signal will fell into that portion that means maybe this one this is actually reserved so that if the signal has different shape if the signal does not come uh, fall in the proper way if it fills here or there then we can catch the signal like I am talking I have talked about that cricket ball I have said that you need the ball is less than size of your palm still you use two hands to grab it properly so this is called effective area and the antenna gain so it does not have any unit the gain does not have any unit because uh, this meter and it will be uh, omitted so whenever you make it uh, one to uh, know about the gain in decibels so if you multiply by 10 log 10 base so you will get the antenna in decibel and it's a good practice that for antenna gain we use one i with our db that means it's an isotropic antenna so <clears throat> but or 
if we don't calculate about our isotropic antenna but we we actually uh, know that that uh, from that i we understand that they said this is the gain of an antenna oops sorry so this is a common thing we you know that uh, from your course different uh, communication course and also data communication course you know that the propagation characteristics in wireless communication basically we we categorize by three types so for omnidirectional there are two types of propagation one is called ground wave another is called sky sky wave so ground wave propagation are the propagation where the signal frequency use up to 2 megahertz frequency so that 2 megahertz up to frequency your lambda can be very big like 1.5 kilometer it's a huge so it can go for a very long distance so our am radio use that so how it is actually propagate if you throw the signal into the air it follows the contour of the earth contour means bokrota so earth er bokrota arta je rokom so like uh, in a in a like sea whenever you uh, travel by sea so you can see one sheep is actually going ahead of you or behind you so after some while you cannot see the sea uh, sheep why because the earth is not plane the earth is like that a curve that's why it is actually sometimes we uh, after some while we cannot see that so if we see send the signal it will actually go through the parallel contour of the earth and it will go to the receiver so this is called ground wave propagation another propagation is that it is called sky wave propagation in the sky wave the signal is reflected so you throw the signal into the air so the signal is reflected from the ozone layer and it actually reflects and it goes on and on most of our big radio transmission are using that so the signal actually having from 2 megahertz to 30 megahertz falls into that sky wave propagation so our short wave amateur radio or something like that we use that type of communication and another type of communication we call it line of sight propagation so in the line of sight propagation your transmitter and receiver should be in line of sight there should not any obstacle like if you have an obstacle it will not work so if there is an obstacle maybe you need to raise your antenna higher so that now you can communicate so in the line of sight so the frequency more than 30 megahertz is using line of sight communication and their lambda is very small less than 100 kilo 100 meter and basically like our cell phone the cell phone we are using so our uh, lambda is 1 to 2 meter is very small size so that's why in the radio communication if i ask you a question how many radio transmitter or receiver you have seen in your, in your life so maybe there will be some of you who even did not see the radio transmitter but if you go to a rooftop you will see lots of bts that means the cellular network antenna is there why because the lambda is small so it cannot travel a very long distance so it need repeater or re actually uh, amplifier to go from one place to another place so for the line of sight we need to have an equation so the equation is the optical sight optical sight means like you are here maybe so your your size is negligible like a uh, you are maybe 1.5 or 1.8 meter so this antenna is 100 meter so what could be the line of sight that how how long or what is the distance that if the antenna is placed in that high i can see that so the formula is d is equal to 3.57 root over h so like i have said that 180 cm per that 1.8 meter height person so if 
you are in a zero position if it is the 100 meter antenna so what could be the distance so please remember one thing the distance will come whatever will come here will be the formula automatically it will come in kilometer and the antenna height always you will put in in meter please do not convert meter into kilometer or vice versa do not do that whatever the value is that you put it in the formula and you get the results so if the distance if the distance is given that 10 kilometer what could be the height that i will be in line of sight so you put it in there and the formula d is equal to 10 3.57 root over kh1 uh, kh <clears throat> so you, from there you will find h so whatever the value will it will be in the meter so if you calculate d it will be in kilometer please do not convert into meter into kilometer or vice versa so you see there is a another change in the formula there is a k so k is called adjustment factor adjustment factor is the like uh, the bokrota that i have talked about that earth is not actually is plain so so that so there is a value which actually adjusts the height like if i am here so i know you will be here you will be here but basically whenever you are going down so maybe you will you will reach that direction that means this place i will not get you so if i multiply with the adjustment factor it will raise your height so that it, you will be in the line of sight so the value is 4 by 3 for a normal surface there are a lot of values like if the surface is like that so it's a high so if you actually the antenna is there so if you make it 4 by 3 it will be in a bit a bit higher so then you maybe you have to make the value 0 0.5 so that it will be in line of sight maybe in on a down slope where then the value may be more than uh, 4 by 3 so there are a lot of uh, parameters over there so if you don't understand we'll talk about this and we can discuss it in our discussion class so normally this is k is a adjustment factor which makes the adjustment so now if i calculate the line of sight between two antenna so this is the formula d is equal to 3.57 root over antenna h1 and k h2 h1 is the height of antenna 1 h2 is the height of antenna 2 so two types of actually uh, calculation may come here that if i have antenna 50 meter another antenna 100 meter or if i have an antenna 50 feet or 100 feet what will be the distance they will be in line of sight or if i have an antenna of 30 meter so i want to put another antenna 5 kilometers away so how high i should raise my antenna so that they will be in the right of sight so these two types of uh, actually uh, calculation may come so there are three parameters any two parameters will be given you have to get another parameter so like line of sight basically how we calculate the line of sight we put the antenna height fixed and then we calculate the distance but sometimes we calculate the distance first then we put the antenna height so it is very rare in the western world but it is actually very common scenario in bangladesh because if your antenna if you know the antenna one antenna two is there and the distance so if the distance came like from dhanmondi from your rooftop if you calculate the what is the best place so the formula gives you the best place is the middle of dhanmondi kriya chakra field so can you put antenna over there you cannot so what we do basically we see around us we see what is the tallest building around us so we put that tallest building and we put our antenna over there and we find another tallest building so then we just calculate the distance this is the distance so how much height the antenna should be then we put the antenna over there but if it is a plain area so then this antenna height will be fixed we will calculate the distance 
so hope you have understood that so for line of sight we have some impairments so now number one impairments is free space loss that there are some losses we have attenuation we have noise we have atmospheric absorption we have multiple propagation and we have refraction so we'll talk about one by one so first this is attenuation attenuation means your signal is going and after some while with respect to distance it is losing its power so it will fall down so if it does not have the enough power so maybe it will not go, go to the receiver okay so this attenuation actually we calculate that how much power is lost per kilometer we actually every time we calculate per kilometer loss so this is very important to place our amplifier or repeaters if we if we know that okay my signal will be lost after that uh, certain distance so before that i will use a repeater so that the signal can propagate smoothly and then there is a free space loss that we have some losses in the free space so there are some loss formula this is also actually discussed in this book but i will talk about this another chapter precisely so that's why just you need to know about the equation normal free space loss equation so this is the free space loss equation if you have some value over there like if you are if you have uh, placed uh, there's a distance of two antenna like the distance is given the if you know the lambda so if you put the formula over there you will get the free space loss in decibel directly or you can calculate using that formula you can simplify it by this formula there are several types of formula over there okay so this free space loss you can calculate for a medium city you can call calculate for a large city so you can find this formula in your book so just whatever you need to just remember the formula that's it then we have noise so the first type of noise is thermal noise so thermal noise you know the agitation of electrons the thermal noise is that we cannot even these are the noise we cannot eliminate this noise will be there we have to live with that noise so we need to know about the noise values so the thermal noise this is the value of thermal noise n not is equal to kt k is the boltzmann constant and t is the temperature in kelvin absolute temperature you know that if you if we have a uh, centigrade so if we uh, add 273 degree it will be giving you in the kelvin value if the noise related with bandwidth so this is the formula even if you know that temperature and band, uh, bandwidth so you can directly calculate the noise in the decibel so we have another type of noise which is called intermodulation noise intermodulation noise that if the medium has non-linearities like two signals they will be modulated but unfortunately they falls in a single frequency and they make some and they are modulated with a single frequency so amar ashole dutu alada alada signal chilo jeta ke ami modulate korar kotha chilo seta na kore ami ekta signal kom kore modulate kore pathiye diyechi so my uh, transmitter does not know that oh, when i have made this noise or the, uh, made this mistake so this noise i cannot even eliminate cross talk it's very rare in wireless communication but sometimes it happens and wanted coupling between two signal it happens sometimes impulse noise is very very important like for a very small amount of time there is a spike like this is the signal a very small amount of time there is a big spike in our signal so this destroyed the whole signal we don't know so this signal is has a relatively very high amplitude and you know that for uh, at a very common uh, example is lightning bodropat jokhon hoy tokhon ei disturbance ta hoy so these are the four categories of noise happens in our wireless communication that we cannot actually eliminate so how do we know that how much noise is affected my signal 
so we know that this is called bit error rate so this bit error rate the function is called eb by n naught so eb by n naught is the signal energy per bit to noise power density that how much signal is having power with respect to my noise power so if i know that eb by n naught then i actually i know that how much power i need to transmit from one direction to another direction with respect to noise that means i know that this is the noise in chapter 2 you you know one parameter called snr signal power divided by noise power snr will give you the overall ratio that what ratio my signal is totally affected but in the eb by n naught you will get the exact per bit noise ratio so it is very important so there are some other impairments like atmospheric absorption like you have a like uh, very heavy rainfall is there so there will be the water will vapor it will absorb some power so the signal will have some attenuation so we have multipath propagation that means my signal is going and it is actually reflecting in different different surfaces and it is making multiple copies so same signal it is having multiple copies we call it multipath propagation and we have a refraction refraction like i am actually throwing the signal into the air and it is actually reflecting but sometimes it is not reflecting it refracted so this signal go out there and it will never come in okay so another thing we have like i am sitting in a room signal comes inside the room so this is not called refraction this is called penetration so signal is penetrating my wall and it comes and with reflection it is coming to my receiver okay so these are the impairments in our normal flow of communication or wave propagation so then a very important parameter over there this is called multipath propagation already i have talked about that the multipath propagation means the signal is going and it is reflecting somewhere and it makes multiple copy of the same signal so for that the signal actually makes multiple copy this is called multipath propagation and in how it occurs it occurs in three way so all three ways are reflection all types of these three types are called reflection but they have different names but for reflection this multipath occurs otherwise it does not occur so there are three types of reflection one is called reflection another is called diffraction and another is called scattering so it is actually given by this uh, example reflection when reflection occurs whenever the signal falls into a surface where the surface size is bigger than the sig signal lambda the surface size is bigger than the wavelength of the signal in that part we will have reflection diffraction occurs if the signal falls in the edge like apnar room er ekta konate bari khelo a sharp edge if the signal actually reflected so diffraction occurs scattering occurs if the signal is reflected to a surface where the surface is less than the lambda size then we'll have scattering okay so i'll give you an example afterwards let just let me give it uh, in that way so like multipath process this is a bigger surface so my signal is reflecting from my bts reflecting and then it's coming this is called diffraction this is called scattering okay so you have a cricket bat so whenever you play the bat straight drive course and ball a battle like much can relax jd gap in direction a demon shady gable to jab it 
কেন কারণ দ্য সারফেস অফ দ্য ব্যাট ইজ বিগার দ্যান দ্য বল সো দিস ইজ কল রিফ্লেকশন বা আপনি একটা বল দেয়ালে মারলেন বড় সাইজের দেয়াল রিফ্লেক্ট হচ্ছে ডিফ্রাকশন কি বলতেছি ব্যাটের কোনায় লাগলো হ্যাঁ ছোট্ট একটা কোনায় লাগলো তখন দেখা যাচ্ছে যে যেই ডিরেকশানে মারছেন বলটা ওই ডিরেকশানে যায়নি ইট গোস টু অ্যানাদার ডিরেকশান যেটা আপনারা দেখবেন যে স্লিপে কিছু ফিল্ডার থাকে শর্ট ফাইন লেগে কিছু ফিল্ডার থাকে তারা বসে থাকে ক্যাচ ধরার জন্য স্ক্যাটারিং মিনস দ্য সারফেস অফ দ্য বল শুড বি বিগার দ্যান দ্য সারফেস ইট উইল হিট তার মানে আমাদের কোথায় সারফেস ছোট যেমন বলের হ্যান্ড ব্যাটের হ্যান্ডেলে যদি লাগে সো সারফেস ইজ স্মলার সো তখন দেখবেন যে বলটা আরেক দিকে যায় কোথায় যায় আসলে উইডন্ন বিভিন্ন জায়গায় যায় দ্যার আর সাম ফিল্ডার্স উইল ট্রাই টু ক্যাচ দ্য বল ওকে সো এই তিন টাইপ অফ প্রোপাগেশনকে বলা হচ্ছে মাল্টিপাথ প্রোপাগেশনের আমার উৎস ওকে দ্য সোর্স অফ মাল্টিপাথ প্রোপাগেশন ডিউ টু রিফ্লেকশন ডিফ্রাকশন অর স্ক্যাটার ইট অকার্স এবং তাতে কি হয় ডিফারেন্ট ডিফারেন্ট আপনি যে ক্রিকেট উদাহরণ দিলাম যারা ক্রিকেট খেলেন ইউ নো যে ওয়ান ফিফটি কিলোমিটারে যদি একটা বল আসে আপনি যদি হিট করেন ইফ ইট ইজ রিফ্লেক্টেড মেবি এটা ওয়ান ফোর্টি ফাইভ কিলোমিটারে যাচ্ছে পাঁচ পাঁচ কিলোমিটারের কমে যায় বিকজ অফ সাউন্ড তারপরে ভাইব্রেশনের কারণে কিছুটা অ্যাবজার্ভ হয় বা ডিফ্রাকশন যদি হয় যেমন স্লিপ ক্যাচ হলো কোনায় লাগলে তখন কিন্তু আপনার কি হয় তাতে কিন্তু আমাদের ভেলোসিটি আরো বেড়ে যায় দেখা যাবে ওয়ান সেভেন্টি হয়ে গেছে আর স্ক্যাটারিং হলে আরো কমে যায় যেমন বলটা বেশি দূরে যেতে পারে না কোনো ছোট্ট একটা কাছের জায়গায় ক্যাচ আউট হয় তার মানেটা কি যে আমার যদি তিনটা সিগন্যাল যায় বিভিন্নভাবে এ বি এবং সি এ যদি রিফ্লেক্টেড হয়ে যায় বি যদি ডিফ্রাক্টেড হয়ে যায় আর সি যদি স্ক্যাটার্ড হয়ে যায় তাহলে ফার্স্টে আমি রিসিভার আই উইল গেট বি বিকজ বি উইল গেট বি উইল হ্যাভ এক্সট্রা ভেলোসিটি তারপরে আমি এ পাবো অ্যান্ড দেন এটার পর একটা বিগার একটা ডিলে হয়ে আমি সি পাবো ইন দ্য মিন হোয়াইল ইফ আই সেন্ড অ্যানাদার থিং অ্যানাদার সিগনাল সেটা কি হবে তার উপরে যে সুপার ইম্পোজ হবে হ্যাঁ দুইটা সিগনাল যদি আমি পাঠাই তো এই এই ধরনের তারতম্যের কারণে একজন আরেকজনের উপরে এসে পড়ে ফেলতে পড়ে যেতে পারে এইটাকে বলা হচ্ছে মাল্টিপল মাল্টিপাল প্রোপাগেশনের এফেক্ট সো এই রিজনগুলো প্রোপাগেশনের এফেক্ট হলো গিয়ে এই তিনটা ডিউ টু রিফ্লেকশন ডিফ্রাকশন স্ক্যাটারিং মাল্টিপাল প্রোপাগেশন অকার্স বাট তাহলে মাল্টিপাল প্রোপাগেশন হলে কি হয় তাতে হয় চারটা জিনিস মাল্টিপল কপি হয় একটা সিগনালের তারা ডিফারেন্ট ডিফারেন্ট ফেজে আসবে তাতে কি হয় নতুন নতুন কিছু যদি অ্যাড হয় যেমন আমরা দেখলাম যে আমাদের এখানে আমাদের ডিফ্রাকশানে এক্সট্রা আমার অ্যাড হইল আর স্ক্যাটারিংয়ে আমাদের ডেস্ট্রাকশান হলো সো তাতে কিছু সিগন্যাল পার্ট আমাদের এক্সট্রা অ্যাড হবে আর কিছু হইল গিয়া কমে যাবে সো এইটাকে আমরা বলছি অ্যাড ডেস্ট্রাকটিভলি কিছু অ্যাড হয় আর কিছু কনস্ট্রাকটিভলি অ্যাড হয় তার মানে বেড়ে যায় আর এটা কমে যায় আর যেটা বললাম যে ইন্টার সিম্বল ইন্টারফেয়ারেন্স হুইচ ইজ ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট লাইক আমি একদম দুটো সিগন্যাল পাঠাইছি তারা মাল্টিপল কপি হয়েছে মাল্টিপল কপি হয়ে একটা এই এই যার উপরে সুপার ইম্পোজ হয়ে গেছে সো এইটাকে আমি বলতেছি আই এস আই ইন্টার সিম্বল ইন্টারফেয়ারেন্স আর যেটা সবচেয়ে ইম্পর্টেন্ট সেটা হলো ফেডিং হয় ফেডিং কি টাইম ভেরিয়েশন ইন দ্য রিসিভ সিগন্যাল পাওয়ার রিসিভ সিগন্যাল পাওয়ারে ডিফারেন্ট ডিফারেন্ট টাইমের ভেরিয়েশন হবে হুইচ ইজ কল ফেডিং ফেডিং টা ক্যালকুলেট করা খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট ফেডিং নিয়ে দ্যার আর লট অফ রিসার্চ গোয়িং অন ইউ ক্যান ফাইন্ড ইট মেবি ইউ ক্যান ডু ইউর রিসার্চ অন দ্যাট সো ইফ আই ক্যাটাগোরাইজ দ্য ফেডিং হাউ মেনি টাইপস অফ ফেডিং আর দেয়ার দেয়ার আর টু টাইপস অফ ফেডিং বেসিক্যালি ওয়ান ইজ কল ফার্স্ট ফেডিং অ্যান্ড আদার ইজ কল স্লো ফেডিং অ্যান্ড দেন ফেডিং ক্যাটাগরি ক্যাটাগোরাইজ অ্যান্ড আদার টু টাইপস সো মেবি লেটস সি maybe uh, this this is my signal say for example this is my original signal and this signal has changed its amplitude shape a bit and this signal the orange sign it is fluctuated very densely so if we draw a graph with respect to distance with the received power so here this is the power and this is the distance so if we if we put a certain distance then we'll calculate that how much the fluctuation or how much difference in signal level 
so it this this is the highest value and this is the highest value so this is the difference for this and for this i think this is the difference so this signal fluctuates very very frequently so this type of signal where the fluctuation is, is high and the diff with respect to a distance the receive power is say difference is high it is called fast fading and slow fading means the difference is moderate jemon ami jodi original signal ta dekhi tale original signal er hoyto abar difference ta ei phase tar kache kintu eta onek khane bere geche so this is called fast fading this orange called fast fading this is called slow fading how it occurs let me give you so slow fading occurs in a rural area or suburban area jemon apnar gram ganje সেখানে বড় একটা গাছ আছে ছোট দু একটা ঘর টর আছে তো তাতে সিগন্যাল আপনার এই মাল্টিপাত প্রভোকেশনের বাড়িটা রেখে হয়তো বা তার এই একটু শেপ চেঞ্জ টেঞ্জ হয়ে যায় কিন্তু আপনি চিন্তা করে দেখেন আরবান এরিয়া যেটা ধরেন আপনি চিন্তা করেন যে আমাদের ধানমন্ডি ক্যাম্পাসের যে পাশের গলি শুক্রাবাদ এখানে তো প্রচুর বড় বড় বিল্ডিং আর চিকন একটা গলি এখানে অনেক মানুষ আসতে হাঁটতেছে তারা মুভিং তো সিগন্যাল কিভাবে আপনার কাছে ডাইরেক্ট আসবে তো সিগন্যাল এখানে ওখানে বাড়ি খাচ্ছে তাতে এই যে আপনার স্ক্যাটারিং হচ্ছে রিফ্লেকশন হচ্ছে ডিফ্রাকশন হচ্ছে সো তাতে এই সিগন্যাল এই ফ্ল্যাকচুয়েটটা খুব এরকম হয় ঠিক আছে সো এই কারণে এইটাকে আমরা বলতেছি ফার্স্ট ফেডিং এবং এই ধরনের ফেডিং আবার দুইটা দুইটা ভাগে ক্যাটাগরাইজ করা যায় ফ্ল্যাট ফেডিং অ্যান্ড সিলেকটিভ ফেডিং এই প্রত্যেকটা সিগনাল উই হ্যাভ সাম ফ্রিকুয়েন্সি কম্পোনেন্টস ইন দ্য সিগনাল সে ফর এক্সাম্পল দিস সিগনাল হ্যাজ এ টেন ফ্রিকুয়েন্সি কম্পোনেন্টস সো ফ্ল্যাট ফেডিংটা হলো যদি এরকম ফেডিং হয় তাহলে প্রত্যেকটা ফ্রিকুয়েন্সি কম্পোনেন্টস আপনার সমানুপাতিকভাবে আপনার অ্যাফেক্টেড হবে প্রত্যেকটা সমানুপাতিকভাবে অ্যাফেক্টেড হবে যেমন আপনার ক্লাসে বসে আছেন সবাই বিভিন্ন জায়গায় বসে আছেন আমি সবার গায়ে পানি ছিটেলাম তাহলে সবাই ভিজে যাবেন বাট যে সামনে আছেন বেশি ভিজে যাবেন পিছনে আছেন কম একদম যে পেছনে একটু কম ভিজবেন তো সেরকম ফ্রিকুয়েন্সি কম্পোনেন্টসের অনুযায়ী এটা প্রপোর্শনেটলি আপনাদের অ্যাফেক্টেড হবে আর সিলেকটিভ মানে হলো যে দেখতেছেন পানি মারতেছেন হয়তো বা কয়েকজন বেঞ্চের নিচে এই করছে বা ছাতা আছে তাতে কয়েকটা ফ্রিকুয়েন্সি কম্পোনেন্টস অ্যাফেক্টেড হবে তো সিলেকটিভ ফেডিং মিনস সাম সার্টেন ফ্রিকুয়েন্সি কম্পোনেন্টস অর সাম পার্সন পোর্শন অফ ফ্রিকুয়েন্সি উইল বি এফেক্টেড ওটাকে আমরা বলতেছি সিলেকটিভ ফেডিং আর এই ফেডিং ক্যালকুলেশন করার জন্য দেয়ার আর থ্রি টাইপস অফ ফেডিং চ্যানেলস উই ইউজ ইন আওয়ার wireless communication not wireless communication our communication so one channel call cause uh, called awgn channel this name you have heard from uh, signal processing i think class additive white gaussian noise channel so this channel used in that channel where there is no noise but we know that noisy channels are the main characteristics is uh, the characteristics of wireless communication that's why so and uh, noiseless channel is basically the guided media so that's why we are not actually considering a wgn you can considering consider it uh, if we uh, consider for like satellite communication but we are not actually uh, focusing on satellite communication we are focusing on the art communication air and uh, water communication maybe the wireless communication takes place so that's why this communication we are not talking about we are not talking about that if you if you see in the book you will see that this is also there there are two types of channel used in our wireless communication one is called relay fading channel another is called recian fading channel so ready fading channel actually used for our non line of sight communication and recian fading channel is used in the line of sight communication and to determine the fading so there there is a formula so k is equal to power in the dominant part divided by the power in the scattered part so this value is zero in the relay fading channel because in the relay fading channel we don't have any dominant part so something zero divided by something means zero and we have some uh, path in the relay fading uh, recian fading channel maybe we have five dominant path maybe we have 10 uh, scattered path so the k value is 0.5 maybe we have that and for 
AWGN channel the value is infinity why because in the AWGN channel all are dominant but there is no scattered path so something divided by zero is infinity so anyway so this is the uh, whole thing we uh, try to discuss in this uh, propagation channel and this wave propagation and antennas in this chapter we have discussed about the antenna antenna types and how they propagate their propagation things beam with propagation characteristics then we try to calculate the gain of the antenna and for propagation we try to know about the propagation types we have three types of propagation ground wave sky wave and line of sight communication then we have talked about uh, different type of communication and for the line of sight communication how the line of sight takes place and we try to calculate uh, the line of sight formula and the uh, impairments we have talked about several types of impairments then we have talked about the multipath propagation and for that what is the effect of multipath propagation and then we have discussed fading the most important multipath propagation effect in wireless communication so hope you have uh, enjoyed this class so if you have any uh, confusion if you have any questions please note it down you can ask me in blc or you can ask me in my live discussion class thank you very much assalamu alaikum